In this Blender tutorial, we will go through the process of creating this beach ball scene. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial aimed at beginner users. During this tutorial, mouse and keyboard inputs can be seen in the bottom right corner of the screen. We will start by setting up the basic elements of the scene. The default cube and the sun lamp are not needed and are deleted. Click on the cube to select it if it is not already selected. When an object is selected it will have an orange outline. Click on the object menu, then delete to delete the cube. The X key is the keyboard shortcut to delete an object. Click on the sun lamp, push the X key. Then click on delete or push the enter button to delete the lamp. Later in the tutorial we will use an HDR image to light the scene. An HDR image will give the scene realistic lighting and reflections. We will now use a UV sphere to create the beach ball. Click on the Add menu, then Mesh, then UV Sphere. When adding a new object, options for the object appear in the left corner. These options are only available prior to taking any other action. Click on the triangle arrow to expand the options panel. Increase the segments to 36. Later we will divide the segments into 6 sections for the colors around the ball. By default, objects will have a rough shading. We will now change the shading of the object to smooth. Click on the object menu, then shade smooth. We will now change how we view the object. Click on the view menu. Most experienced Blender users have a keyboard shortcut based workflow. The keyboard shortcuts appear in the menus alongside the operation. Click on viewport. Then front. We will move the sphere one unit up on the Z axis, so it will sit on the ground level. With the sphere selected hit the G key for grab, then Z to move on the Z axis. Then 1 to move up by one unit. The move object options panel can be collapsed or ignored. We will now add a plane for the ground and create a back plate. Click on the add menu, mesh, plane. Before we rescale the plane for a better fit, we will move the camera to be roughly in place for the final render. We will change the view to look through the camera. The camera will then be moved to a better position. Click on the view menu. Align view. Align camera to view. Click on the N key to expand the side panel. Click on the view tab. Then the lock camera to view checkbox. We can now view the scene through the camera, and move it to a better view of the scene. Push the S key to scale the plane. Drag with the mouse to scale up the plane, so it is outside the view of the camera. The plane will now be extruded upwards on the Z axis to create the backdrop. 
click on object mode and select edit mode from the drop down. Click on the edge select button. Click on the back edge to select it. We do not need to view the scene through the camera for the next steps. Deselect lock camera to view. Then press N to close the side panel. Pan with the middle mouse button to get a better view of the back edge. Push the E button to extrude. Drag up with the mouse to extrude the back edge upwards. We will now bevel the corner to make it more rounded and smoother. Click on the edge menu. Bevel edges. Drag the edge with the mouse to set the angle of the edge. Scroll with the middle mouse button to increase the number of faces and make the corner more rounded. Left click to complete the bevel. Press 0 on the number pad to check the scene through the camera. We will now apply smooth shading to the backdrop. Press the tab key to enter object mode. Click on the object menu, then shade smooth. We will now look at the materials and shading for the scene. We will start by adding an HDR image as an environment texture. HDR images or high dynamic range images can be used as environment textures to give scenes more realistic lighting and reflections. I will be using this beach image for my scene. This image and other HDR images and textures are available from HDRI Haven. The HDR images on HDRI Haven come in different resolutions. Higher resolutions are better quality but have higher file sizes. As I will use the image for lighting and reflections only, the image will not be seen. I will use a 1K version. Download an HDR image and save it to an appropriate location on your PC. To add the HDR image, click on the World Properties tab. Click on the Color option and then select Environment Texture. Click on the Open File icon. Navigate to where your image is saved and open the image. Click on the rendered preview button to see the scene with the HDR image. We will now select the Cycles Render Engine and set the background to transparent. This is so the HDRI will be used for lighting and reflections, but it will not be rendered. Click on the Render Properties tab. Then select Cycles from the Render Engine drop-down list. Open the Film submenu. Then select the Transparent checkbox. We will now look at adding materials to the sphere and the backdrop. 
Prior to adding the materials, we will switch into materials preview mode. This mode allows the viewport to update more smoothly, while giving us a good view of the materials. Click on the materials preview mode button. To add a material to the sphere, make sure the sphere is selected. Initially we will create one material for the sphere. Then divide the sphere into sections and create additional materials. Click on the materials tab, then the new material button. Click on base color, then select a color. We will now adjust the roughness of the material. The roughness controls how rough or reflective the material is. Scroll down and adjust the roughness. I will use a roughness of point 0.1 which is a very reflective material. Materials can be assigned names. It is a good habit to name your materials, as it will make things easier for larger projects with lots of materials. To change a material name double click on the name, then enter the new material name. We will now add a reflective material to the background. Click on the background object to select it. Click on the new material button, then base color. Select a color, I will use black. Scroll down to the roughness setting and adjust the roughness, I will use zero to make the material fully reflective. I will also add a name to the material. We will now look at adding the different colors to the beach ball. Click on the sphere to select it. Zoom in by using the mouse wheel or pressing period on the number pad. Press tab to enter edit mode. Click on the face select button. The faces of the cube will be divided into groups of six columns for each color. Hold the ALT key and click on a horizontal edge to select a column of faces. The column does not include the faces at the pearls. Clicking on a vertical edge will select a ring of faces around the sphere. Press and hold the ALT and SHIFT keys, then click on 6 lines of vertical faces, so they are selected. We will create new materials for the sphere by copying the original material, then selecting a different color. This will make sure all other settings for the colors are the same. Click on the Add New Material Slot button. Then the New Material button. Click on the original blue material. Then the Materials Special menu. Click Copy Material. Click on the New Material then, select Paste Material from the Materials Specials menu. Click on the base color and select a different color.
click on the assign button to assign the color to the selected faces. Double click on the new material and add a name. The same process is repeated to add different colors around the sphere. The speed of the video will be increased for this section. The red color has one column of faces too many and needs to be changed to blue. This is easily corrected by reselecting the first column of red faces. Click on the blue material in the materials list. Click on the assign button. We will now look at adding a material to the ends of the sphere. First the background will be hidden temporarily to give us access to the bottom of the sphere. Click on the eye icon next to the plane in the object hierarchy to hide the background. The faces can be selected using a few different methods. The faces could be selected by holding the shift key and selecting the faces with a mouse. An easier method in this scenario is to use the circle select option. Circle select can be enabled from within the select menu or by pushing the C key. The circle area can be increased or decreased by scrolling with the mouse wheel. Resize the circle so it is inside the end faces and click the left mouse button to select the faces. Right mouse click or press the enter key to exit circle select mode. Pan the view with the middle mouse button to view the bottom of the sphere. Press the C key to enable circle select, then select the bottom faces. This adds the bottom faces to the selection. Click on the add new material slot button. Then the new material button. Click on one of the beach ball materials. Then the materials special menu. Click copy material. Click on the new material then, select paste material from the materials specials menu. Click on the base color and select a different color.
click on the assign button to assign the color to the selected faces. Double click on the new material and add a name. Click on the eye icon next to the plane in the object hierarchy to unhide the background. Press the tab key to enter object mode. Press zero on the number pad to view the scene through the camera. We will start by adding names to the objects. It's a good habit to add names to your objects as it will help find objects in the hierarchy in larger projects. Double click on the plane in the object hierarchy and add a name. Double click on the sphere in the object hierarchy and add a name. We will now create two new beach balls by duplicating the first and add rotations to each. Make sure the beach ball is selected, then hold the shift key and press D to duplicate the ball. Press the G key for grab, then X to constrain to the X axis, then move the ball to the left. I will also add a name to the new ball in the object hierarchy. With one of the beach balls selected, hold the shift and press D to duplicate. Press the G key to grab, then the X to constrain to the X axis. Move the new ball to the right. I will also add a name to the new ball in the object hierarchy. We will now move the beach balls to slightly different positions and rotations. Click on the beach ball to select it. Press the G key to grab, then the Y key to constrain to the Y axis. Move the ball backwards to a new position. To rotate the ball, press the R key, drag the ball to freely rotate the ball. Press the X, Y or Z key to rotate in a specific axis. The same process can be used to move and rotate all the beach balls. The speed of the video will be increased for this section. We will now adjust the camera for the final render. Press the N key to open the side panel. Click on the view tab from the side panel. 
Enable lock camera to view. Pan and scroll with the middle mouse button to adjust the camera view. When complete, uncheck lock camera to view. Press the N key to close the side panel. We will now set the amount of samples for the final render. Click on the render properties icon. Make sure the cycles render engine is selected. Within the sampling submenu enter the amount of samples for the render. I will use 500. We will now enable the denoising option. Denoising assists with removing noise within the image to make it more clear. Click on the View Layer Properties icon. Scroll down and enable denoising. We will now save the project prior to rendering the image. It's a good idea to save your project prior to rendering, so it is not lost if something goes wrong during rendering. Click on the file menu, then save as. Navigate to an appropriate place on your PC and save your project. Click on the render menu, then render image. Depending on the speed of your PC, this may take a long time to complete. I will now pause the video. When the render is complete, the image can be saved by clicking on the image menu. Then save as. If this tutorial was useful, click like and subscribe to this channel for more Blender and CG related tutorials.